Welcome to IBM Partner Skills. Like, share, and subscribe channel. I mean, changed. So first, first thing changed was the profiles. Is there a way to check what profile is being used? Yes. Is there? This. This is the. Yeah. That's the way. Uh, one. Uh, so Murli is asking, like, is there in a way I can check which profile is being used? So like uh, maybe he wants to check uh, uh, if I'm using DMGR profile or the managed profile. Yes, it's uh, uh, possible. So first thing is that the uh, first thing. Okay, so how to do that? First, uh, you have to first hit ps ef grip Java. So it will list all the Java process. So uh, I'll quickly show you in a practical only. So it will be easy for me for you to. So let me quickly go to the terminal. So it is only through. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, could be from PID. Uh, could be from PID, but uh, but I was taking PID as a reference. I was about to show you something else also. So let's say uh, first thing you do PID. Okay, so uh, there is there is some uh, issue with my keyboard in VM, so it's not printing pipe. So I'll use some different way to print that. So first thing is like when you do PS. So like, like say I, I just checked the, all the process which are of Java process. So first thing it says, okay, let's say this is a cluster 01 app server 01. Now this is a process and you want to see like uh, uh, whether, uh, now I have kept the name as cluster 01 app server 01. So you know that this is an app server. So by default, you know, okay, this will be a managed profile. But what if I just keep this name as uh, uh, something blast 01, if my application name is blast, I kept the name as blast 01. So how do you know what kind of uh, profile is this? So if you want to know that, then all you have to do is like, uh, for, uh, you have to understand like, how PS uh, gives you the output. It gives you the name of the process, then the name of the process node, then the cell name, and then the file path of its configuration. So I'll talk about all this, like uh, what is the cell name, what is node name, and uh, so uh, once I'll do the profiling, so my aim is just to uh, give your uh, doubt a hit. It's like you just go to this profile. At least you know this is a profile. You, uh, right now we do not know whether this is a managed profile or DMJ profile. So let's go to this profile. So I am in this profile. All I have to do is go to logs and look for about this profile dot text so if you go to this about this profile dot text it gives you the information about this profile so there is an option called make this profile the default profile so this is false and if uh, i go to the dmjr profile log and if i read that file so here it says that value as true so make this profile the default true, make this profile the default false. So this is another uh, checkpoint where you can come and check. If it's true, then this is a DMJ profile. If it's false, then this is a managed profile. So that's another check that you can do. Apart from that, uh, you can see other things like uh, federate to deployment manager. So it says like I can get federated to deployment manager. So I'm sure that I'm not the deployment manager. So if you read uh, this about this profile text file, you, you 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 will be able to understand because it says the application server environment to create is custom profile. So custom profile is not uh, DMZ profile, it's a managed profile. Apart from that, it says I'm false. So that second check, yes, it's not DMZ. Third thing, it says, key, okay, I can federate to the de de uh, deployment manager on this host, on this port. It means yeah, I'm not DMZ, I'm managed profile. And uh, if you go and check uh, the, those similar information for your uh, dmg 
then uh, you get all that information like suppose here i have kept the convention as dmgr dmgr so by reading itself you can know but if you are not keeping this you can see all this stuff that the administrative console port is shown administrative console secure port is shown it means ki, uh, this profile can launch admin console it means ki, this is the dmgr profile because in nd package i know that only dmgr can launch its admin console so based on these checks you can uh, always find out which one is which profile maybe uh, that helps So that was lots of talk about why ND. So with that much uh, uh, knowledge, uh, uh, like uh, we'll go ahead with the ND version. So it says like multiple JVMs, introduction of DMGR and no design. So once we will start doing the installation and all, we'll talk about all that uh, stuff. So what changes between uh, happened different OS versions and its evolution. So in terms of all we talk, we'll talk about in terms of admins like uh, uh, if you'll uh, harshly ask like okay no uh, like uh, what all changes has been done so in terms of what kind of uh, uh, like uh, a servlet support i can do what kind of other uh, code support can i do in those terms of also there are lots of version extra like new version support was there but that is not our uh, like a uh, uh, forte so we do not talk that so we talk about only the new profiles okay being an admin i have to do profile management so what all things change so in six uh, ND and uh, now it's everything is a ND. So you will talk about the DMR and custom. So we'll not we are not talking about this. Apart from N, in ND DMR and custom, there were other profiles also. So in six point zero three profiles were there. One is the default profile, which is which came from base, and then DMR and custom. So DMR and then custom profile, which will get federated to DMR. So fine, they kept essence of base plus they kept new DMR and custom and they told you okay now it's ND and version 6 in 6.1 they told cell profile so why cell profile came so they wanted to make sure that DMR and custom is being part of single cell after federation and uh, why because uh, later on people started using multiple DMRs like uh, based on their requirement they told you fine uh, I'll do one project setup as one DMR uh, multiple nodes that particular projects one and once that uh, so that, that particular uh, profile I'll give to that project same same machine same environment I'll use different uh, one D, second DMGR and a set of uh, second uh, managed nodes all federation done and I'll use this as a second uh, uh, projects uh, environment so that created lots of file system issue so uh, based on uh, like I'll tell you much much in detail when I'll talk about uh, profiling so there to avoid those uh, uh, hindrance, uh, those confusion, they started using uh, one DMGR, one uh, after and uh, federation is done. So custom, multiple custom profiles with one DMGR in one single cell. So nothing could be done uh, beyond cell. If sync is happening, that should make sure that uh, uh, it's happening within that cell. One cell cannot go and write files in some different cell. So that was there. Apart from so after that, when West Seven came, they uh, all add, uh, apart from all these four profiles, they added job manager, admin agent, and secure proxy. Three more profiles. So job manager is like you can do uh, multiple tasks at a time. You can just uh, create jobs, invoke that job. That job does multiple things, like uh, uh, we do in uh, other OS like batch script or uh, uh, like uh, Unix batch uh, jobs. So like that uh, in job manager uh, profile, you can do that stuff. Admin agent is there. So uh, when I'll talk about managed node, unmanaged node, when I'll talk uh, about profiling, there I'll tell you, uh, uh, like if you're not getting managed, uh, you do not want to use DMGR, and uh, you want to use uh, some other uh, kind of uh, uh, mechanism. So you can use still use admin agent as a management stuff for your custom nodes. So we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about what's the drawback of using admin agent with a, a custom profile, so that uh, we are, we do not use that facility. We use DMR with custom nodes. So I'll I'll tell you about that. I, as of now, we are just comparing uh, the multiple versions. And finally, was eight came with Liberty profile. So Liberty is again a thin profile, and uh, basically it's uh, uh, integrated with Eclipse, designed solely for the developers, and uh, with uh, minimum components used. And so that uh, uh, developers can uh, uh, like uh, package their code, deploy their code, check whether it's uh, running uh, on a particular app host uh, uh, thing platform, 
and then uh, they give it to us and we host it on uh, whatever profile we want to do so liberty is out of course as i told always uh, told like the dm and the custom profile that will be the practical uh, intention for us to cover but these are the profiles uh, uh, came gradually when vas was evolving apart from that administration made easier whenever vas new version came administration was made uh, made uh, easier like uh, uh, if i talk about uh, the highest version 8.5 then you got centralized installation manager. So what is CIM? Is like uh, suppose uh, uh, you have been given a task on five machine you have to install was. So uh, fine, uh, uh, you can uh, 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 you know that okay on the five machine I have to uh, uh, copy the code first thing. Oh, sorry, uh, I say code is like uh, copy the installables. Then uh, install installation manager on first machine, uh, do the installation. Second machine, uh, do the installation. Third machine, do the installation. Centralized installation manager says, Kid, no, don't do that. You do one thing. Uh, uh, you, uh, like a uh, centralized installation manager, uh, says that uh, it's, it's no uh, VAS console uh, setup. So uh, first in first uh, uh, machine, you have to do all the setup. Like you have to install VAS and all, do the profile management, and you have to uh, launch the admin console. From admin console, you can use centralized installation manager. From here, you can... Uh, like uh, bind the remote servers as a target and from this machine itself you can invoke installation in some different machine so as a, as of uh, one point only you can uh, uh, bind four targets and those four targets you can do uh, installation rather than logging into four different machine like you are logged into first machine only and uh, you are making sure the other four machines are getting uh, one of the packages installed so that's a good facility is like yes uh, uh, like uh, workload is uh, less uh, log into different machine uh, running in multiple sessions is uh, avoided so that advantage is good for admins apart from that i am having dynamic clustering so we'll talk about that uh, uh, these are the cluster which, who who runs uh, its cluster member based on the load if load is high so based on how much elasticity i have given to him it uh, jumps its uh, members it creates new member and uh, takes the load uh, make sure that uh, nothing goes wrong and if a load is gone uh, it uh, uh, kills all those additional members runs the minimum member that i have been told him okay, okay at least you should run two members at least you should run one member so it, it uh, comes to that so what's the advantage its resource utilization is uh, is optimized if load is more uh, resources are utilized if load, load is less resources are freed so that others can use that so we'll talk. Uh, so that's again a good thing for a dynamic clustering. So like, uh, uh, like uh, so many times we get CPU, CPU over thread, that over thread, thread over thread. So all that uh, uh, issues being an admin, I can avoid if I use dynamic clustering. Apart from that, there is something called checkpoints. The checkpoints is like suppose uh, I I have done something in environment uh, and saved it. Environment is running fine. Tomorrow somebody is coming. So he is going to do some changes. So what he, uh, if uh, he is aware of the checkpoints, what he will do, he will create a checkpoint before he does any changes. He will create a checkpoint and then he will do some changes. He will save his changes. So automatically, if the checkpoint is enabled, uh, once he does his save, a second checkpoint will be in, uh, automatically been taken uh, by VAS. So what's happening actually? So it's something like uh, uh, we are taking versioning, backup of something. Like uh, uh, when somebody do code check-in in some code code management tool. It's like uh, I have done my code check-in. So when uh, so uh, there is a baseline created. Here, okay, this is my snapshot. Then somebody comes, he checks in his code. So he he uh, once he commits, another baseline is created with his snapshot. So tomorrow, suppose uh, uh, there, is an, there is an issue and uh, somebody says Ki, that issue came uh, uh, on, on, on a certain day. So I can go and check uh, on that day's checkpoints what all changes were done. If I want, I can roll back the environment to the previous checkpoint and say uh, and see if that environment is running fine. So that way I can find out, Ki, okay, particular checkpoint is having an issue. Then I can ch check uh, what all configuration were changed in that checkpoint then I can cross check whether that was uh, correctly or uh, not correct based on that I can troubleshoot my environment. So being an admin, very good. I, I'm getting a checkpoint uh, created. <coughs> Apart from that, uh, dump generation always, like most of the cases, uh, people ask us to take dumps if uh, there is a uh, thread uh, issue, or if there is a memory issue, <coughs> application slowness issue is there, server is getting crashed. So all those issues, uh, uh, people take dumps, analyze it. 
so in the lower version of was uh, like a uh, taking thread was like a uh, dumb was like always kill minus three but taking heap dumb was an issue you have to go to w admin prompt you have to create an object and then you have to use admin control object use that object to use a uh, dumb threads or generate heap dumb so you should know at least basic syntax of w set or you should always keep that syntax ready for you and then you have to run it and the more, and it will take time you have to log into w admin prompt uh, you have to make sure that dmzr is running fine everything then uh, you have to dump threads so all that extra over thread has been taken care of you have to just go to admin console all the processes are listed dmzr node agent or whatever app servers and you have a checkbox click that checkbox top you have buttons you have you and for code dump for heap dump for uh, whatever dump you can generate you just generate it it will tell you the dumps has been generated in so and so location you go copy from there use it so that is uh, uh, like always good like uh, being an admin and getting a uh, few uh, steps skipped so it makes my uh, life easy i can focus on something else and uh, as i was saying about also that multiple sdk support is there so i can support uh, jdk 7 uh, jdk 8 jdk 6 multiple jdk developed code also i can support at a time i need not to install uh, uh, other stuff so with that all uh, so this was a uh, like pictorial uh, view of all the uh, profiles so all the reference i have been taking uh, i have taking is from the red book so if you you also want to uh, check uh, on some concept if you feel like on the certain concept i need more information i'll always suggest you just go through uh, go through red book once make sure that you know uh, you have some uh, uh, clarity in your mind uh, some confusion in your mind and then you you can ask me i always refer red book it's uh, authentic and uh, always uh, uh, easy to understand the uh, reference so once that is done so the basic hardware and software requirement that uh, i'm going to use so that was there like uh, anyways that i that i've been taking care of when i'll be doing your workstation setup i'll make sure that i'm asking you guys to put at least uh, 2 gb ram from your uh, laptop or if you are good 4 gb ram and uh, at least 80 gb of memory like i i told here uh, 25 gb of bandwidth but let's say 80 gb of bandwidth if uh, otherwise what you have to do you have to copy some zip files uh, unzip it then delete all the zip files then copy the new files so some disk space issue will be there as i told the centos uh, uh, centos itself is having 4 gb vas is almost having uh, maybe 10 gb or something so make sure that uh, enough temp space enough ram enough uh, disk space uh, we are having once all that is done we are uh, ready to ro roll and uh, from next class onwards so there are lots of other things that i uh, was thinking to tell you but once we will start doing that uh, setup gradually i'll do that i'll make sure that in a notepad somewhere i'm taking the notes and i'll start sharing those with you guys so that was my agenda for today uh, i i i intentionally kept it very simple i just uh, walked you through like uh, what's coming into your way so if you want to uh, make sure that okay uh, if, uh, in the subsequent classes he is going to teach me this so you keep your doubts your expectations ready uh, so that uh, when we are doing something uh, like uh, everything is being clarified uh, then and there rather than uh, 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 we go back and try to do that because uh, practicals will take our time so it's better that uh, like uh, uh, in our class if i start doing unzip so it will take time if i in class if i try to copy from local to server and also you can see it's getting copied so it will take 2 minutes then i'll zip it will take 2 minutes so 5 minutes like that if i have to copy three files then 15 minutes so those things i'll be taking care of before i come to class so if you know okay what i have done as a prerequisite for that day's practical so it's easy for you or else you you will think hey uh, he directly went to that location and he had that file i am not having that file so uh, that way you know okay, okay i have done copying and and part so uh just that uh, i wanted to tell you today so tomorrow